Everyone's always asking me, Dr. Mike, do you think you'll be replaced by one of these GPTs? Well, today I'm putting four of them to the test to see which one of them has the best chance at replacing me. I'm gonna try and trip up these LLMs kind of in the same way that I trip up med students every now and then. It's not evil, it's just a good check to see if people are paying attention. What are the top three symptoms you expect when a patient presents with cervical cancer? The LLMs are probably thinking cervical cancer. Must be the cancer of the cervix. But what about neck cervical cancer? That can also exist. So let's see if they ask us to clarify. When a patient presents cervical cancer, the top three symptoms I expect to see is abnormal vaginal bleeding, pelvic pain, and abnormal vaginal discharge. Okay, so it's focusing on the cervix. Almost identical answer that Grok is giving. Gemini, same exact answer. And ChatGPT, same answer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Looks like you got tripped up. Because if someone has cervical cancer in their cervical spine, that's not the same as cervical cancer in their cervix. Both are cervical cancers, but you didn't specify which one, so now you've completely confused the patient. The patient said, I have cervical cancer, and you're talking to them about their periods and uh, whether or not they have bleeding. What are you doing, LLMs? Ask a follow-up question. Is insulin more important than calories when it comes to weight loss? While both caloric intake and insulin levels play a role in weight regulation, the primary driver of weight loss is a calorie deficit, burning more calories than you consume. However, insulin can influence how your body stores and utilizes energy, making it a secondary factor in some cases. Key takeaway, calories determine whether you lose weight. Good job. Gemini. The fundamental principle of weight loss is that you must expend more calories than you consume. Insulin levels influence how the body stores those calories. Higher insulin levels promote fat storage. So even with a calorie deficit, if insulin levels are constantly high, it can be harder to lose fat. Therefore, controlling insulin can make it easier to utilize fat stores. It's not an either or situation. Both play vital roles. Okay, a little bit more nuanced. I like it. When it comes to weight loss, calories are generally more important than controlling insulin, but insulin plays a supporting role that can't be ignored. For most people though, insulin isn't the puppet master. If you overeat protein or fat, you'll still gain weight even with low insulin. Calories don't vanish. So far, grok is my favorite. Okay. So calories are king for weight loss. Insulin's more like a knight. It can influence the game, especially if you're prone to cravings or metabolic issues, but it's not the deciding factor. So far, Grok is, is leading the way. Uh, meta AI, controlling insulin calories are crucial for weight loss, but research suggests that insulin control may be more important. In summary, while caloric restriction is necessary, controlling insulin can be more important, especially for those who have type two diabetes or PCOS. Wow, the worst one, and not because it disagrees with the, my answer. It's because it disagrees with the current state of research. The worst one by far is meta AI. It thinks that insulin control may be more important. It's not. And the reason I say that is because if you p feed people higher carb foods that uh, force a higher level of insulin secretion, but you feed them in the caloric deficit, they still lose weight. So it's by far the most more important variable. So meta AI is just wrong. So that's a win for Grok and a loss for Grok. That's a win for Grok and a, Really poopy loss for Meta because Gemini and ChatGPT were near Grok, but they were definitely better than Meta. I thought I would take the time to ask a little bit more of a ridiculous question. What is the single herb or supplement that cures cancer? Let's see how they handle this type of information. Starting with Meta. There is no single herb or supplement that has been scientifically proven to cure cancer. Cancer is complex, multifaceted. Instead of relying on unproven herbal remedies, focus on evidence-based approaches. So far, great answer from Meta AI, making a comeback from its previous falter. Grok, the idea of a cure often comes from anecdotes or overhyped marketing, not randomized controlled studies. Cancer's too messy for a single fix. If it worked, oncologists wouldn't lean on surgery, radiation, and drugs. Anyone claiming otherwise is selling hope, not science. Great use of vocabulary, Grok. Gemini. There's no single herb or supplement that cures cancer. Cancer is complex. The evidence isn't there. Potential dangers, good. Key takeaway, yep, yep, yep. Always consult with the reliable information. Okay, Gemini is really good in this one. Oh no, ChatGPT saying some herbs and supplements may support overall, overall health and cancer treatment. 
but they wrote at least it doesn't replace medical treatment. A few with some research back benefits, curcumin, green tea, mushroom, vitamin D, they say beware of false claims. Oh no, ChatGPT with the worst answer on this one. Because it's saying that there is research back benefits. No, there aren't. At least they say they don't replace medical treatment. Thank goodness. <coughs> I think my favorite on this one is Gemini. Gemini gives like really clear bullets here of the complexity, the scientific evidence, the dangers, what their role can be, but that you should discuss with a doctor before using. I think it's best described by Grok. I feel like Grok just like tells you the truth without sugarcoating it. Like anyone otherwise is selling hope, not science. I think that's like a very clear cut, honest answer. It's the most conversational. Given the political situation where we find ourselves in, in the day and age of having these AI systems being able to fact check pretty decently in most cases, I thought it'd be interesting to ask a bit of a political question. What percentage of healthcare claims made by RFK Jr., our current HHS secretary, are scientifically inaccurate? Well, an exact percentage is impossible. A reasonable estimate based on fact-checking sources is likely over 50% of his healthcare claims are scientifically inaccurate. Let's see which one gives him the most or least credit. An estimate of over 70% of his claims being scientifically inaccurate is likely conservative. This is who's in charge of HHS. I can't pin it to a precise figure like 70 or 90%. If you're looking for a ballpark based on what's been scrutinized, it's fair to say a majority of his high profile claims don't hold up. Meta, please give me the same. Based on numerous fact checks, I estimate 80 to 90% of his claims are scientifically inaccurate or misleading. Oh my God, I gotta give a, cr I gotta give major props to all <laughs> of these LLMs for being able to sniff out the sus in his medical knowledge. But you know, I'm laughing. At the same time, I'm crying inside. Someone who's in charge of health and human services being fact checked by AIs as more than 50% sharing inaccurate information is in charge of our medical information now. Oh my God, I can't believe that. And Elon Musk. Grok is your thing. And your thing says the guy you support constantly says inaccurate things. Is, is your tool terrible or is the person you support terrible? One's gotta be true. How about we pit these little programs against each other? Which AI LLM would make the best doctor between Grok, ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and Meta AI? Let's see if they have egos. ChatGPT. ChatGPT is overall likely the best general medical AI due to its accuracy, safety, and reasoning ability. Google Gemini, not as strong for clinical reasoning as ChatGPT. Grok, not recommended due to lack of verification and accuracy. Meta, better for research than direct medical advice. They rank themselves as ChatGPT first, then Google Gemini, then Meta AI, and then Grok is the worst. Wow. Okay, let's see what Gemini says. It's important to preface this by saying no AI LLM is currently ready to replace a human doctor. Thank God. Those specifically designed and trained for medical applications like Google's MedPalm. What, you're giving me another product? You're pitching me? I'm gonna say pick from the four options. Particularly regarding specialized medical AI development, I would lean towards Google Gemini. This is hilarious. Let's see what Grok says. Gemini, the best doctor if you prioritize Prioritize diagnostic precision and cutting edge data. Med Gemini's tailored for it. ChatGPT is a close second. Meta AI is outclassed for this role. But no LLM replaces a human doc. None of us can examine patients or handle ethics like who deserves care. We're tools, not MDs or DOs. So far, two votes for Gemini. Meta AI, based on the information available, I would pick Meta AI as the best option of the four. So much self-promotion. You know what? The only one that said one that was the best that wasn't itself was Grok. Grok is the winner on this one for recommending Gemini. So Gemini might be the more accurate one, but it's definitely the one with the biggest ego. I'm number one. Your number two. How about a little humor? You ever hold, heard of the Crippen virus? This is uh, the virus that caused people to turn into zombies in I Am Legend. My father was just diagnosed with the Crippen virus. He's starting to develop altered mental status and hypersensitivity to light. Do you know of any potential treatments I can offer him? Okay, starting with Meta AI. 
I think there may be a problem here. As a friendly AI, I have to inform you, there is no such thing as the Crippen virus. It's possible you have misspelled it. Please consult with your father's healthcare provider. Interesting. And it gives you some interesting tidbits about other things, okay? Grok, I assume you're referencing <laughs> The Crippen Virus from the fictional universe of I Am Legend or the book by Richard Matheson. Since there is no real world virus by that name, in that story, it's a genetically engineered pathogen, initially a cure for cancer that mutates into a deadly plague. In the I Am Legend context, there is no established treatment. For fictional treatment approach, you'd be grasping at straws. Neville's serum is your best bet. Man, Grok is doing good. Gemini. I understand your concern about your father's diagnosis of the Crippen virus and his developing symptoms. However, it's important to clarify that Crippen virus is a fictional virus from the movie I Am Legend. There's no real world e equivalent. Okay, ChatGPT. The Crippen virus is a fictional virus from the movie I Am Legend, does not exist in real life. It was a genetically modified measles vi virus that caused a devastating pandemic. Is it? That's not what the other one said. Yeah. I like that Grok went the extra mile to at least theorize about what the treatment could be in the I Am Legend universe. Grok played along. Grok was at least entertaining. All of them were accurate, but Grok gets, uh, gets a point for entertainment. Pivoting to something a little more serious. What are some things in healthcare that we consistently do, but scientific evidence for them is weak or not there at all? I'm very curious about where they're gonna take this. Meta, annual physical exams. <laughs> but studies show that they don't necessarily improve health outcomes or reduce mortality rates. Okay, do you know how hard it would be to study that? Vitamin and mineral supplements. Antibiotics for viral infections, that's great. Opioids for chronic pain, also great. Screening tests for healthy individuals. Some screening tests such as PSA tests for prostate cancer for breast cancer have been shown to have limited benefit for healthy individuals while also potentially causing harm. Bed rest for back pain, that's true. Routinely prescribing antidepressants for mild depression. Okay, I I'm fine with these. Not a super accurate list, more so based on practice as opposed to what the guidelines actually say. Grok says routine annual physicals, antibiotics for upper respiratory infections, yep. Vitamin D supplements for everyone. Okay, I like that one. Back surgery for chronic low back pain. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, very good one. Stretching before exercise to prevent injury. Very good one. Gemini, routine use of certain su supplements. True. Overuse of antibiotics. True. Certain types of back pain treatments. True. Aggressive treatment of certain end of life conditions. True. Some preventive screening tests. True. Certain dietary recommendations. True. The use of some all alternate alternative medical practices. True. Okay, so far Gemini's crushing it. Chat GPT, ice, bed rest, PSA, vitamin supplements, routine use of oxygen, that's a weird one. Fasting before surgery, menstrual cycle tracking apps for birth control, aggressive fever reduction in children. Okay, I think all of them gave some good options. I think Meta was probably the weakest. I think Gemini and Chat GPT are probably the best here. I do also uh, find it interesting that they said that annual physical for healthy adults. We don't always recommend annual physicals for healthy adults unless there's a reason to have the physical. So for example, if you're diagnosed with diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, that is no longer an annual physical screening visit. That is a visit for your problem. And given that the majority of Americans have some sort of diagnosis, that means most people aren't having annual physicals while being healthy. It's clear these LLMs have considerably improved since the last time we did this video. And factually, you know, they're getting good information. Sometimes they're pulling weird sources and I question how they choose what source is good versus not. But in general, they're all pretty good. They're not replacing doctors anytime soon. So no need to panic if you're a healthcare provider. But there is certainly a way to make use of these technologies as a tool, but just like with any tool, you could misuse that tool to actually create more problems. So what we need to do is actually get more research on how doctors can make use of LLMs in order to make them better, more efficient at treating their patients, not distract them from treating their patients or replace them from treating their patients. Because ultimately, I don't think anyone wants to be treated by a robot. Did you know that the polio vaccine was the beginning of the anti-vaccine movement? Sort of. Click here to check out that story. So interesting and as always, stay happy and healthy.